Hey everyone, I'm Ben Rolo and today I'm going to take you through my track Happy Go Lucky. Uh, this one is part of my Distant Notion EP out now on Basics Recordings. So if you haven't checked that out yet, I will drop a link in the comments below. Uh, this one was heavily inspired by artists such as Random Movement, DJ Markey, and it's taken a more sample based approach than I usually do, so hopefully you'll be able to hear that. Um, enough of this mug anyway, let's get on with it. So I will show you this project from the top down. It's uh, usually the way I structure projects when I'm working on them. So I'll go from the drums to the FX to the bass instrument and then the vocals. So if you want to skip forward to any of these I'll drop the timestamps in the comments below. Before I go into any of the instruments, um, a lot of my processing actually comes from my sends and buses, just down here on the bottom right. As you can see, I've got a load set up from my room reverb, which is just a Valhalla reverb with a bit of an EQ. My FX reverb, which is the Valhalla shimmer. My first parallel compression, which is a bit of a lighter one which is the uh, FabFilter C2. An Ableton saturator with the soft clipper turned on, which is just brilliant. Uh, the Micro Shift, which is a stereo width plugin from Soundtoys. My Delay, which is just the stock one from Ableton. Uh, SSL Emulation, which is my second parallel compression plugin. Uh, this is the G series. And I think that one's from Waves. And finally, the uh, Santoy's Decapitator, which is probably my favourite saturation plugin. So when I'm first writing a track, I will usually bring up a singular drum break and kind of base the tune around that. Um, and I'll usually kind of write all my melodies or a bass hook or something along those lines before really building the drums, but... For the uh, point of this tutorial, I'll show you the drums in full first. So the uh, first drum break I started with was this one. So this uh, drum break is from the Technomatic uh, pack from EST Studios, which is a brilliant pack for all liquid. So yeah, definitely check that one out. So I won't go through every break because I've got about probably four or five here as well as a few percussion loops and top loops I've all so uh, chopped up as well. But my main rule of thumb when I'm making my kind of rolling drums is to find uh, drum loops that complement each other really. So this is a, more of a rolling break so I've kind of gone for similar styles in my layering so I'll play those through for you. So hopefully you can hear there how they're kind of complementing each other in terms of frequency and the rhythm as well. Processing wise on all these breaks, I tended not to really go too ham on it. Um, mainly with my breaks, like I said earlier, um, I like to process by sending them to these buses or by processing them as a group. Um, so... All I've really done on a lot of these is add a Fab Filter Pro Q3. Um, mainly I've just taken off some of the sub and maybe some of the low mids in some breaks as well. As you can see, in some of them I haven't even done any processing at all. Um, and yeah, hopefully it worked quite nicely. Next up, when I'm building my drums, I will look for a kick. Um, Again, I've gone quite simple with this. I haven't synthesized anything, layered my kicks at all. I just found this um, this brilliant kick from the Monty pack. Cut the tail end off, and I've also yeah just cut a low, bit of the low um, sub off as well, just so we're not clashing with the bass. Um, 
and I've also importantly put it to linear phase. Um, this is very important when you're making cuts this steep, uh, just to stop phasing issues and stuff like that, really. Finally, for the drums, I would add my snare. So when I'm uh, kind of building my snare to fit with the brakes, I'll usually always uh, put a serum or synthesized snare in there and uh, tune it to the key of my song. Um, I'll always put this quite low in the mix, as you can see here, we've got it really low. And um, what this does, so when I'm looking through my samples, my snare samples, I can really choose uh, a sample that complements the uh, breaks and is in key with um, the serum snare so we don't get those weird kind of dissonant hits. Processing wise, again, I haven't done too much to the individual snares. I've just made sure that the tail isn't really coming through just because we don't want all these frequencies clashing. Um, what I have done on a few of them, as you can see, is sent them to different bits of saturation, maybe a bit of reverb on some. And I've also cut some of the low mids with this EQ as well. And on my drum group, I've uh, used this FabFilter Pro QMB, their um, multiband compression and expansion uh, plugin. I use this on a few songs, and I feel like the uh, kick and the tops need to come through a bit more. Like here, I've um, put a expansion um, element on with a slow, relatively slow attack and release just to kind of get these tops pumping a bit more and the same with the kick here yep I've uh, put one with a bit of a faster attack and release so all together the drums sound like this so uh, next up is the effects um, I won't go too much into this, as you can see, there's not really too much going on. Um, all I've done here is um, got a riser in Serum, and that's just rising this uh, noise oscillator up um, 32 bars. I think I've done the same on this one here, with just a slightly higher pitch. Um, these are just some sample risers and a few cymbal hits I've found as well just to create that impact and transition. So this is the most interesting part of the track for me. Um, as I said before, this song is quite sample orientated. I usually would play my bass line in, but this one really stuck out to me. Um, it was from a drum brokers pack, which is a great sample website, so definitely check this out. Um, so yeah, basically what I've done is just chop this up and put it in the intro, and it sounds like this. So yeah, as you can hear, it's really the basis for the track, that sample. Um, the only problem I did have with it when I um, just copied and pasted it onto my brakes directly, it all became a bit messy. I was getting some kind of clashes with the rhythm. Um, so what I did to combat this was uh, to use the Ableton Convert Melody to MIDI feature. Uh, this has saved me so many times from my lack of uh, music theory knowledge and just helping me out with ideas really um, and yeah so what I did from there was just clean up the MIDI a bit delete some notes and make it more accessible for a kind of drum and bass tempo so when I'm making my bass I think a good rule to have is to split the kind of subs and low bass and the kind of mid bass parts apart from each other and that's exactly what I did on this one. Um, so the sub I made in Serum, and it's a very simple patch really. Just two sine oscillators here, one with a bit of um, unison, detune and FM modulation. And yeah, apart from that, that's really it from the, uh, for the sub. 
Uh, for the higher mid layer, I went a bit more into it. Um, I actually wanted to mimic the sound of the intro bass. So I found this uh, Scarby Rickenbacker bass on contact, which is brilliant, sounds great. And what I've done here is just, again, cut the sub like I did with the kick. Um, I've put linear phase on just to stop those phasing issues um, and not interfere with the sub, really. Also, again, use my favourite saturator. Um, yeah, just to give that real feel and make it fit together. I also added these little kind of bass fills just for a bit of interest and to give you that bit of ear candy. They sound like this. Um, moving on to the melodic bits and the instruments. So um, a lot of the kind of atmospheric bits and the fills were actually samples, again, from a drum broker pack. Um, I wanted quite a cinematic feel to go along with the kind of funky tune. I just thought it added a nice little element. Um, I'll play those through and you can hear all of those together. <laughs> So as I keep going on about, I've been trying not to kind of put too many plugins on my tracks. As you can see here, a lot of them have little to no uh, kind of VSTs or plugins. Um, the most I've really got is a bit of saturation and again, taking out some of the sub to stop that clash. So I still like to play in quite a bit of my elements as well. I thought... Um, even though the kind of sampled element sounded nice, I wanted to add a bit of uniqueness and uh, complement the samples that were already there. Um, so what I've done on this intro is add a kind of droney pad from Iris and a few LFO flutters. Um, they're just rising with the riser, really. And yeah, just giving that a bit of suspense. I'll play those through for you. So the strings are another element I thought would complement the kind of cinematic samples as well. They're mainly following the bass line's uh, chord progression. Um, this was actually made in the BBC Symphony Orchestra by Spitfire Audio. Uh, just using the Violins 1 preset, minimal processing again, just a bit of... Um, bit of effects reverb, a bit of stereo widening and some saturation too. If you haven't picked it up yet, I think I picked it up for free. Not sure if it still is, but it's well worth the price. Um, on the track, just a bit of uh, taking off the sub again. So a more prominent feature that I did play in was this uh, guitar. Um, this is actually a VST from, again, Spitfire Audios, and it's in the Labs instrument. The section of it I'm using is the uh, Pill Guitar. And yeah, it's a brilliant plugin. Got a load of different kind of things you can select. It's free as well. If you haven't got it yet, definitely, definitely pick that one up. Um, processing wise, just taking the sub off again. Seems to be a common occurrence of my processing this one. Uh, the Crystallizer from Sound Toys, uh, just to add a bit of delay. I think it's. A great plugin for effects for me. I always use it for those kind of background elements. And finally, the decapitator as well, just to give that more kind of real feel to the uh, VST. If you did want a more in depth tutorial of how I make my guitars with labs, I've got a video on my YouTube channel, so check that out if you like. And if you've been following my music for a while, you'll notice in my tracks, I love my kind of reverberant horns. And this one, it's no different. Um, I'm again using my Sensual Saxophone uh, from Embertone. Absolutely love this plugin. Um, processing wise, just taking a bit of the sub off, using Radiator, which is another saturation and amp emulation from Sound Toys. 
and also using a bit of a delay because I think I wanted this a bit more in the background for second drop. The horns you hear throughout are actually the uh, Truman trumpet again from Embertone. Um, I tried to shy away and not do the same kind of saxophone um, but yeah I think this worked well for the fill elements processing wise no EQ bit of saturation and effects reverb on the sense and the crystallizer delay just for that bit of interest so all together the instruments sampled ones and the played in ones sound like this Um, finally, we're on to the vocals. I thought the instruments filled out the track quite nicely, so I didn't want to make the vocals too much of a lead element. Um, I was considering not putting vocals in at all at the time, but I was going through my sample libraries just for a couple of extra elements and came across a for a cappella. A few of the little phrases kind of uh, jumped out to me. I thought fit the theme really well. Um, I'll play that for you now. Walk all night. Yeah, I thought it fit the kind of vibe I was going for. Um, so processing wise, pretty simple again. Um, just using my favourite uh, little Alter Boy plugin at first, taking the formant down by five semitones. A trick I use quite a lot. Um, also the radiator again, just taking some of that treble up and that bass away. A bit of EQ again, taking the sub and the decapitator as well, adding a bit of treble too. So altogether, it's a very simple tune really. Um, no real technical wizardry or anything like that in it, but I feel the elements make it hold up and it's um really inspired by those kind of older older tunes especially the dj markey stuff i hope you enjoyed this anyway and it gave you some insight into my workflow um, as always if you like the video please give it a like and subscribe if you want if you've got any questions please just drop them in the comments and yeah thank you so much for watching <laughs>